Yo, what is up everybody and welcome back to part three of what if Naruto was a senju. Uh, in the previous video, we went over uh, how Naruto interacted with the Akatsuki to lead up to his hatred of them in the animated short. That obviously led to a lot of connectivity and I do thank everyone who liked that video and commented down below. Uh, your comments are very appreciated and if you go back and look, I probably already smashed like on your video or at least responded uh, to your comment at the very least so thank you to absolutely everyone who is interacting with this content but yeah i'm rambling on enough in this video we're gonna go a stretch further and see exactly what we can do with naruto and his new solo team so without a further ado let's get into this Nezuko. Believe it! Whoever insults my hair will get the full brunt of my fury. Shut up, you idiot! Hey, it's me, Goku! With Team 7 now accepted into the Shinobi Force of the Leaf, we see them attend a line of D-rank missions, especially chosen out for their ease but somewhat competitive nature since they are still accompanied by a Chunin. But Naruto, as you might have thought, had been through many of these missions already and had gotten used to how they worked, thus would take a majority of the workload on himself, giving the team a lot more time to train. As per usual, at first the team would start off with Taijutsu and so on, with the only person really benefiting being Sakura, since Naruto had already had a lot of experience from his prior Sensei Yamato and the vast amount of missions he had been on, and Sasuke being somewhat of a prodigy being able to pick up really quickly. So, by the time Sakura had gotten it down, Kakashi would confront them about Naruto having to carry the missions per se. So, after the confrontation, Naruto would ease up a bit, and even though he would hate to admit it, as they started working more as a team, begrudgingly, he had started getting along with them, ever so much more. Sasuke, of course, benefits from having a stronger sparring partner, so he grows rather fond of Naruto as well, and long before they even ask for an upgrade to mission, as Sasuke and Sakura would request about... I would say three weeks into their being Team 7, Naruto would actually suggest that they get the most basics of the Shinobi down first. Obviously, they would protest, saying they were able to, you know, do everything the Academy required them to, so what more is there, there for them to really learn? Naruto would say, can you climb a tree? With Sakura scolding like always, saying of course I can climb a tree, I'm not a child, as Naruto would proceed to walk up the side of a tree using chakra control. I could go into the exact dialogue between the three, but Kakashi would eventually interrupt and say that Naruto has a point. They would be going over at least tree walking within this one week period, with as per usual, Sakura getting it down near immediately, and Naruto dro dropping a few tips to Sasuke, as, once again, they are rather fond of each other here, so this could spiral in many ways. On the other hand, what we're currently looking at is Sasuke getting it down probably within the first two or three days, meaning they could start their progress on water walking, which would thus happen. Water walking would come in useful as later of this series, as you might know. So, per usual, they would not finish the water walking training for perhaps Naruto already knowing it, but Sakura and Sasuke are still only adept at best, not being able to, without concentrating, hold the position. So, with this, they would finally have the courage to once again ask Kakashi to up the level of mission they would partake in. Kakashi would give a glance over to Naruto, who would reassure him. Which would lead us to, per usual, get the Land of Waves mission. Almost exactly the interaction would go down until around, I believe, uh, the Demon Brother saga, or the little Demon Brother arc we had. So, after they had been in the leaf, per usual, they would run into a puddle. But this time, both Naruto, Kakashi, and Sasuke would all take notice of this. Of course, Kakashi would still pretend to get hit, 
But before he even could get hit, Naruto would have surrounded them in wood, preventing them from reaching their sensei, as Sasuke would use this opportunity to blitz them, possibly chaining them instead of to a tree this time to the wooden poles that Naruto had summoned, meaning they are both entrapulated without Kakashi ever needing to take any hits. This, as usual, would lead to the confrontation of both the Demon Brothers, interrogation, and so on, whilst also Gato. But this is where we would find out initially that the Demon Brothers are actually being accompanied by someone. We don't only find out about Gato, but this time about the presence of both Zabuza and Haku. But obviously, Haku and Zabuza are rated as a Chunin and Jonin level fighter, while Team 7 have Kakashi and Naruto presence, who have the same ranking. And plus that, on the other hand, they do have two Genin, who could probably, with ease, take care of Tazuna, as the only threat at that point must be bandits. Plus, Naruto and Kakashi both have access to cloning techniques, so if it comes down to it, this should be pretty okay. But as per usual, Kakashi would ask the team with them reassuring and him sending Pakun or the dog summoning to the Hokage to inform him of the changing. And once again, as per usual, the bridge builder would agree to a prolonged payment over a period of time to repay them for a higher level mission. But thus, we continue the Land of Waves arc with the next possible change coming in where they arrive in the Land of Waves, being accompanied by Zabuza's sword flying across the sky, nearly decapitating the group. Obviously, the main change being Naruto would not require Sakura's assistance in dodging the blade, and once Zabuza accompanies his blade by landing on top of it, Naruto would follow that up with a wood dome, a large dome protruding around the tree, and Zabuza himself trying to entrap him within so that the group can get their bearings together. So this would give them enough time to make a formation as Naruto would try and locate Haku. But before he could lay his sensory ability to use, Zabuza would slash a giant X into the dome and uh, kicking out the lowermost triangle would leave him space to exit. He would laugh saying that, oh, you must be Naruto Senju, Nine Tails Jinchuriki, and the grandson of that fifth Hokage of yours. How I'm going to love killing you. You have a massive bounty from the other villages. Obviously meaning they require the Tailed Beast itself and not Naruto. Also, Naruto having a tuning status would probably have some influence to end up in a data book. This is where things would extremely start changing. Obviously, Zabuza would be both combated by Naruto and Kakashi. Kakashi knowing Naruto would not get in the way in this fight, but would instead be a benefit as they could work together to throw Zabuza off. But whilst Naruto is throwing constant wood style jutsu, he is laying his sensory ability to use once again, attempting to find Haku. But, as we now know, with the change of the Demon Brothers actually revealing the inf information, Haku might as well have a hunch that this was the case and would most likely still attempt the Hunter Nin thing, but instead would try and jump in front of Naruto and Kakashi and take on Zabuza head-on trying to slash at him, but as he does with a near seeming reaction from Naruto trying to bash in Haku's head with a wooden pole emerging from the ground they would know that the jig is up and thus would start fighting as a group obviously creating a more close match where Zabuza and Haku would still be forced to run away as they had not been expecting this Obviously, Haku would still have, like, held back, not revealing the Demon Ice Mirror quite yet, but would have probably used something like Ice Senbon and one-handed hand seals, meaning Naruto and Kakashi have a lot more information to go off of. But with the emergence of Haku, Kakashi was also required to use his Sharingan as per normal, so would still pass out. From here on to about the start of the training period, things would go almost identical. Obviously, there would still be some form of uh, water prison scene with Naruto and Sasuke working together, but it would most likely not be as big of a deal quite yet. 
So, as I said, things would go most likely to canon up until the start of the training period, where Sakura and Sasuke, probably even before Kakashi wakes up, would have gotten down the water walking exercise under the guidance of Naruto. Naruto would also be exhausted, but not close to the degree of Kakashi since he had used an exterior force being a Sharingan to keep up with the battle. Naruto would probably talk to Kakashi in this period, saying that Kakashi is sloppy without his Sharingan and should probably work on fighting without it, so maybe Kakashi himself can benefit from training in this period. Once again, since Naruto was here, Kakashi would not have been completely as injured and would actually be able to partake in training. So, while Sasuke and Sakura had figured out how to water walk, Naruto would have prepped Kakashi for training himself. But in this period, they would be fluctuating training. They need Sakura more on Taijutsu than anything else since teaching her something completely from scratch will be useless. But nearing the end period, they might have taught her the most simple of Genjutsu. But on the other hand, the short period or the short amount of time that Naruto and Sasuke had spent together, Naruto would have revealed that he has a form of deep forest emergence that is just not quite as effective, only springing a line of trees and not an entire forest. But nonetheless, Naruto and Sasuke are able to figure out a combo move which they will later on use. And, once again, saying the word on the other hand, and once again, we see that Naruto and Kakashi had in fact trained together, getting Kakashi's skill in both Taijutsu and avoiding certain Jutsu up to standards, with Naruto using his knowledge of current water style to uh, combat against Kakashi's. Obviously, Kakashi would reveal the Lightning Blade, and they would come up with a way to use this against Zabuza. So, here we get to skip forward to the second Zabuza encounter, all going pretty much to canon at this point, with Naruto leaving a clone or a wood clone, which can actually take more than one hit, behind to take care of the bridge builder's family, having a hunch that something like this might happen. As the team arrives back at the Land of Waves, their suspicion had come true and Zabuza and Haku would stand there present, also leaving Naruto's clones to, as usual, deal with the intruding bandits, saving both Tsunami and Tenori, the bridge builder's daughter and grandson, once again gaining Naruto that respect. On the other hand, Naruto, Sasuke, Kakashi, and Sakura would all stand in formation as they prepare for this battle. Sakura would be forced to stand back as she would be asked to handle the entire interaction with the bridge builder and make sure that there are no surprise attacks from any bandits. While Haku would be left to both Naruto and Sasuke as Kakashi would request to be left alone with Sabuza. In this case, I think Sasuke would be a much greater matchup against Haku, seeing as he would have gone through massive amounts of chakra enhancement, like training throughout that one week period after having learned water walking through Naruto and Kakashi's suggestion after seeing Haku's speed the first time. So, as you might have thought, we would be going over the Sasuke and Naruto versus Haku fight first. Knowing that Naruto himself is very fast, Haku wouldn't immediately resort to going into the Demon Ice Mirrors, rather using it more of a final resort. Instead, starting off with probably hundreds if not thousands of Ice Senbon and so on and so forth, as he would try and attempt to lure them into getting hit at least once, since every hit would make them factually weaker and slower, and then much e more easily trapped within the Demon Ice Mirror. As they aren't very often in the same vicinity, this becomes progressively harder. But nonetheless, Haku would probably land quite a few hits on Sasuke, which Naruto would probably use as some sort of uh, eco downgrade for Sasuke, throwing shade at him like, why are you getting so uh, hit so often, Uchiha boy? I thought you were supposed to uh, gain some magical eyes that let you move faster like Sensei does, and so on and so forth. 
with Sasuke throwing the occasional jab back at Naruto, saying the only reason he hasn't been hit is because he's running away from the fight. Thus, we still have that dynamic between Naruto and Sasuke, obviously being a more friendly rivalry than it was in canon. So, in this instant, Naruto would eventually get hit and basically shot on by Sasuke as they would finally get lured into that corner after having hit probably Haku a lot more than he hit them, they would once again be trapped in the Demon Ice Mer. And near a second close to Sasuke getting hit, he would awaken his Sharingan. Haku did not even try to avoid the inevitable and directly went for a hit on Sasuke, who was clearly the lesser opponent and would be less, um, how do I say it, less difficult to get rid of. Meaning Sasuke would be able to unlock his Sharingan, once again taking a slice to the face as he does in canon, leaving Naruto to try and defend him, which more likely than not would leave Naruto getting not an entire body full of Senmon, but an arm this time. Sasuke would freak out and try to go off on Haku, while Naruto would insist that he is okay. He would try to combat this as one of his arms are almost completely limp, and he could barely form hand seals, making it really hard for him to be able to use wood style. Meaning, more often than not, he is just using Taijutsu and using his enhanced sensory to avoid Haku. But nevertheless, Naruto would eventually get slower and almost be hit, being saved by Sasuke, still getting basically fully emerged with Senbon, leaving Naruto with a rage moment where Ninetales Chakra would course through his body. Obviously, normally, uh, Ninetales Chakra would be suppressed by Wood Style, but in this case, it's actually enhanced. Pull out of the seal on nearby force because of the Keki Genkai, Naruto would actually get a full cloak of the Ninetales Chakra. This would lead in his body expanding constantly, which or retracting and expanding constantly, which would lead to the Senbon firing out of his arm. He would jump back as he formed some hand signs, screaming, Deep Forest Emergence, creating a larger tree line than he usually could, and with using uh, the Substitution Jutsu, Sasuke is able to get out of the line thanks to Naruto, leaving a fireball to not only eradicate the Demon Ice Mirror at a very high level with all the constant source for the fire to spread, but inevitably would hit Haku. Which now would leave us with the Kakashi vs. Zabuza fight to go over. This fight would more or less go to canon, but with the exception of Kakashi being able to save up on a lot of chakra, not using the Sharingan off the bat. He had gotten used to performing water style jutsu without using his Sharingan, so he was able to conserve a lot of energy fighting Zabuza. Using his naturally fast hand signs, it was able to outspeed Zabuza on any water dragon clash or water jutsu usage, leaving both Kakashi and Zabuza in a pretty close vicinity in power without even Kakashi needing to activate his Sharingan. So, when Kakashi inevitably did activate his Sharingan, he had a much larger advantage, being able to quickly make the upper hand on Zabuza and attacking him ruthlessly, eventually using his dogs to clamp down on Zabuza as he would try to attack. But, this is where we, as per usual, lead to Haku jumping in the way, taking a Chidori and dying for Zabuza. With the only real change here being Naruto not completely raging out, as he did in fact not have that moment with Haku. In fact, no one had any other interaction with Haku as they were aware to his presence. On the other hand, we still follow the basic line of Zabuza requesting to be able to kill Gato, as Gato would per usual, on his giant boat appear on the pier, trying to kill both Zabuza and the Team 7 that had been sent to protect the bridge builder, as they're too useless to do anything, or so on and so forth leading to Zabuza cutting through many shinobi along the help of Team 7, which Sakura finally gets to jump in and take out a few bandits as they would clear the entire camp, leaving only Gato. 
Zabuza would finally be buried without Gato being taken out, but instead left for the villagers to deal with, as he was tied to a stump in the middle of town to be berated and humiliated all the villagers wanted to, and would one night randomly appear dead. On the other hand, the time remaining on the bridge's building would be used just as efficiently as it originally was, but this time we have a period more peaceful, so the group was able to split in two. But instead of the training period that you are expecting, what in fact would happen is the two teams or the split team two groups would take chances clearing out the remaining of Gato's hideouts of both bandits and funds as all that money would be re-given or just returned to the residents of the Land of Waves as they would use it to once again make their town slash village a trading nation. And along with this, Team 7 get their uh, appropriate pay, I guess, which they would thus return to the Hokage. But before they return to the Hokage, we have that ever-memorable moment where the bridge would have been named after Naruto. But for Naruto's request, it is named after a great man he once knew, who Naruto claims, if had been still around, could have solved all their problems in a mere moment. And thus, the bridge would have been named after Tenzo, the Great Tenzo Bridge. Kakashi obviously being the only other person knowing why Naruto did this would obviously console him saying that it was a good decision and he kind of likes the name. But Sasuke and Sakura, Sasuke probably just brooding, and Sakura who would actually speak up saying we should have called it like the Great Team 7 Bridge or something, or the Great Sasuke Bridge or so on and so forth. But this would lead Naruto to turn around and giving Sakura a speech she'll never forget, saying as she should stop simping for Sasuke, or at least stop going after him, as he's clearly not interested. And with a near evil look on his face, as if he was about to murder Sakura on the spot, he would say, also, if you ever say something like that about my sensei again, about his name being boring... I'll make sure your head touches the ground, whilst your body stands straight up. Obviously being a clear declaration or threat of war. So, Sakura, being kind of scared of the nullifications, would refrain from talking to Sasuke for a few days, and would actually be left to think. Obviously, first we must go over the reward. Obviously, Team 7 being congratulated on the first of their... Uh, I could say generation, meaning their year of the academy, to take on this high of a level mission. Obviously, not having been a D or a C rank, but in fact a B or an A rank, depending on how they might score it. So, with this period we have left for Sakura to think, I would actually like to give some character progression. She would not only take into account why Naruto was so serious, which is what the thought would start off like, why is that guy so stuck up? Always so serious. Which would lead her to come to the revelation of Yamato and what he meant to Naruto. She would think back and how he say, said if he was still around, meaning he had probably passed away, leaving Sakura to sympathize for a second. Which would let Naruto's words about her chasing after Sasuke mindlessly also sink in. And she would decide that she might stop chasing after Sasuke, but in fact, if he doesn't want her, let him be happy. So he would, she would stop bugging Sasuke all the time. And with that, part three of What If Naruto was a Senju will come to an end. I really do hope y'all enjoyed this part. Uh, the involvement of characters like Kakashi, uh, Kurama, and even other members of uh, the original Team 7. Uh, I really do hope y'all enjoy how I did this. I know, once again, this doesn't exactly cooperate back to the way I did that animated short, but I did still put a lot of time and effort into this. And after this part, the next part will be the final one that wraps up this story before we get a more concise story going later on in the future. Also, if you're watching this, I about three or four days ago, I would have posted another video in the form of What If Naruto had Dark Matter release. If you really enjoy this series, maybe you'll enjoy that one. So uh, maybe consider go checking this one, that one out too. And I know this uh, video was a little bit shorter than the previous two, but the next one's going to be roughly the same length, if not longer. So 
without further ado, this has been your boy Six. Have a great morning, afternoon, or evening. Peace. Until next time, nerds, we'll meet again In the virtual world where heroes ascend Keep the flame of adventure burning bright Until next time, nerds, let's take flight